we'll now go to Mr. Jans for six minutes or less, please. Well, thanks so much, and uh, probably could be hosting this in our riding, given that four of the five members of this uh, panel are from our riding. Mr. Beamish is just outside our riding. Um, I'm going to start with Mr. Angel. If you can speak about uh, back to West Coast Aquatic, you talked about the important role they play when it comes to reducing conflict and uh, also, you know, in terms of co-management. Uh, can you speak about wh what role DFO is currently playing at the West Coast Management Board and what needs to happen in terms of investment? Sure. Thank you. Uh, so, Mr. Chair, my reply uh, is that. Um, Right now, DFO is not participating in the management board. Uh, they provide some limited support for the salmon roundtables uh, to operate, and that's that's great. But they're not actually participating in the process of decision making, and that's what we need from the department. Uh, they began 20 years ago in that uh, capacity and then withdrew. And uh, we need everyone at the table to be able to make the kinds of decisions that need to be made. So. Um, we, we need DFO back, we need the province there, we need all the players there, but uh, DFO really needs to, to show up for that. Thank you. And just to, to follow up, uh, can you talk about the, you know, what's been invested currently and what did it look like 20 years ago? And what's the ramifications of, you know, the decisions that are being made right now by the department by their absence? Well, the, the the funding, you know, 20 years ago was, it was far more significant than what there is now. We we operate on on tens of thousands of dollars to, to keep things going. And the ramifications are that, okay, we the crisis with salmon is a complex set of problems, right? There's no one single cause. And if you want to deal with a complex problem, you don't deal with it by just asking one person and doing one thing. You have to get everyone in the room and get them to figure out together collectively what the strategy is. And that's what we do day in, day out through the Salmon Roundtables and West Coast Aquatic. The things we were hearing about in terms of coastal ecosystems, we're doing that. We're, we're collectively agreeing on the research projects that go out into the, into the near shore ecosystems and figuring out how to gather better data and what's happening to the fish there. We're doing all of those things together. And that's what needs, that's the difference right now so if they're going to spend all that money my point is is not to pitch for specific projects but to say spend it wisely and ask the people who are closest to what's going on how to do that we we've heard about resources the pacific salmon treaty uh, mitigation fund you cited that in your opening can you speak about how that's uh you know playing out for New Chalneth and for uh, the Area G trawlers, for example. And we know that they've had a lot of concerns about the mitigation fund not flowing to them, yet they're not fishing close to what they were prior to the agreement. Can you speak about that? Well, the issue there is, is um, yeah, this question of using that money wisely. That money was meant to come to the west coast of Vancouver Island to support the communities here who were facing cutbacks in in uh, what they were able to fish. And not very little of that money has actually made it here. And we've been going after them over and over again. We have fishers who are ARG fishers. They've lost a lot of catch. They've had their livelihood suffer. And we've made some simple requests to, to DFO to, to have that money come to the region. I guess that's what I'm talking about in the larger pictures. We need regional support for this and West Coast Aquatic is there to, to enable that. The, the mitigation fund is money that could have been going to the coast and could have been supporting salmon rebuilding all these many years and it still could if the, if the department would simply make a decision around that. Mr. Horowitz, you talked about um, how difficult it is. So Tofino you know, Hatchery, $8,000. I know talking to Joe Curley and Andrew Jackson and running the hatchery out at Kennedy River, um, uh, your hatchery at Thornton Creek. Can you talk about how little increases you've seen over the last 30 years and what that, how that plays out for your operations? Well, our facility was built in 1975. And like I always say, if you have a house on the West Coast, uh, that age, there's lots of maintenance, let alone if there's water running through it. Um, we've done quite a bit of work uh, fundraising to maintain our facility, upgrade it to the highest level of biosecurity standards. Um, so we are poised to move into the future effectively. Um, but we're still facing threats like climate change. We need to increase uh, the height of our dam. I have the ability to increase rearing capacity, but we need more water. Um, so I'd like to get more crews because salmon are generally all spawning at the same time. So we could have more crews on more systems. Um, so, you know, the, the money we're looking for is not for carpeting and, and uh, Xerox machines. It's just more people and just making sure that we have 
uh, effective, well-maintained equipment. You talked about like to other hatcheries, Tofino Hatchery, for example, eight thousand mm-hmm. dollars before yeah. they even get off the ground. I mean, can you talk about how this impacts morale? Which uh, actually, I, you know, money unlocks yeah. manpower, uh, volunteer hours, and also, what would happen if we just stop funding hatcheries? What would be the impact to those uh, rivers and the systems where we live on the west coast of Vancouver Island? Yeah, for starters, you could because we all are small hatcheries. We're not federal facilities. You can just shut us down. There's there's no pensions. There's no union jobs. Um, we donate. We we put uh, up to a quarter of our budget towards helping Tofino Hatchery and Resources, um, and they've been engaging lots of different volunteers, businesses, etc., just the way we do. But people have to understand these are remote systems, and uh, in those systems, two of the rivers that we enhance, like. There, there's only a handful of unlogged watersheds on Vancouver Island. These are not habitat issues, but the salmon are struggling. But I must say, through the tagging that we've done, the marking, we do see results from hatcheries. I'm sorry, we do. And if it wasn't for the hatchery effort and all these volunteers and businesses and locals oh, contributing, yeah. there'd be nothing. Thank you, Mr. Johns. Uh, we'll now go to 